Okay. Which of the following anatomical abnormalities is most likely to be responsible for this patient's symptoms? Um, an anomalous first rib, cervical rib, um, elongated transverse process of the seventh cervical vertebra, um, a hypertrophy of the pectoralis minor, uh, minor muscle, or tightness of the coracobrachialis muscle. So this is a 30-year-old man presenting to the clinic with complaints of pain, numbness, and tingling in his right arm, particularly when he extends his arm above his head. He also reports occasional swelling and heaviness in his arm, and then the physical exam reveals a diminished radial pulse when his arm is extended overhead. So this diagnosis would be thoracic outlet syndrome. Um, so now we've got to figure out exactly what's going to Basically, it's usually some sort of compression of the brachial plexus is what we're thinking of here. Um, at first, I wanted to be one of the rib options, but the problem is, is an anomalous first rib, doesn't it come off of the cervical, like one of the cervicals? So then that kind of, they go together. So I don't, the hypertrophy of the pectoralis minor muscle kind of makes sense because it would compress the brachial plexus so i'm gonna go with that that's the only one that i can completely make sense of even this if one I'm... here yeah okay so cervical rib um so let's let's talk about this um so the anomalous first rib can cause compression of nerve life but less commonly the cervical rib i'm not exactly sure what anomalous first rib is I think that if it is the same as a synonymous as a cervical rib, then I have to fix this question. But let's just make sure that an anomalous rib can't go somewhere else. You know what I'm trying to say? Oh, so that's a good point. That's That was kind of not exactly knowing what an anomalous first rib was probably what threw me off the most, which is my fault. <laughs> yeah, let's see what they say here. Um Yeah, I think it can go like, it can also cause, you know, thoracic outlet syndrome, but I'm trying to read exactly what this means. Yeah. Because I know what a, you know, a cervical rib for sure, right? This is the most common cause, right? Is where you have an extra cervical rib on like C7 or so, right? C6, C7, right? And then that causes that outlet to be very, very, you know, um, narrow causing thoracic outlet syndrome. But I don't know what this anomalous first rib means. This is something that I'm looking up right now to see what they mean by this. Because I knew what a cervical first rib, but I don't know what. Yeah, apparently it's like super rare. So this is something different, it seems like. Okay. So it's a little bit different. I'm trying to figure out exactly what it is yet. It's still kind of confusing to me. Um, yeah, I'm not confused. Congenital anomalies of the first rib are rare. Oh, it might be like a deform, like it's a little bit deformed, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It seems like it, it seems like it's still from T one, but it's like it's 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 formed weird. Right. Like it protrudes yeah. up a little bit more and it might be like a little bit thick. Right. So it means something slightly different. Right. This means that you have a thoracic first rib, but it looks weird or something. So okay. it's still going to be a cervical rib. This this um, this can also cause thoracic outlet syndrome. Right. But the best answer is going to be your cervical rib because that's the most common. That makes sense. All right.